welcome to the Whiskey Roundtable. We are your hosts, Big G, Karen Helen Keller, Doug Dunbar. What's going on, kids? It's been a long week. Oh, uh, another, we have another four or five days of this, and then I think we're back to some kind of normalcy. I hope so. I am too. I'll tell you what. I've, I've been, I'm usually never home, and even though that the whole virus thing has been going on, I've never been home anyway. But, um, it's kind of slowed me down a little bit, but the problem is I wouldn't have a problem staying home. The the problem is you can't do anything in the yard. <laughs> can't cut the grass. Can't do anything. It's it's a well because mud of the pit weather, out. right? Yeah, if the weather was a nice week, there's I'd a lot be, we could I'd, be doing. But I'd have a hundred things done by now. Well, plus you're stuck at home with me, so that's no prize either, you know. Mm. I had a, I told you that phone call <laughs> that I had with that woman, one of my customers. She's like you're. So I said, yeah, my wife's working at home. I'm at the office. And she's like, your wife's working at home and you're not working at home? I said, what, you don't hear well? <laughs> I told you my wife is working from home. Mm -hmm. She cracked up. I mean, it's not. I'm working at home. Yeah. Walk the dog. Watch TV. I mean, in the evening, that's about all there is. Yep. And the big decision is I'm going to go get the mail today. Should I dress up for that? Or right, <laughs> right, right. right. Well, the I'll neighbors bring, have seen me at my I'll, finest. I'll bring the garbage can in or something like that. You know. It's hard to believe, but, though, that yeah, that a week from today is May 1st right. or May Day. Right. That's crazy. I know. Um, so are you, Big G, are you planning to break out the break out the Maypole next week? or Maybe. <laughs> you have to wear your thong again this year. Yeah, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear it backwards this year. I'm gonna play and keep the boys separated. But uh. <laughs> dear God, yeah, the CDC I remember uh, noticed it came out on Monday. I don't know if any of you caught this, but uh, they added a new symptom to the list for um, early early symptoms of coronavirus. And one of them ball scratching. That, no, that close. Um, you get a in loss the ball, of in the ballpark. A loss of taste and smell. Oh, it turns out is one of the, one of the early scratching. onset symptoms, and so they published that on Monday. I, I mentioned that to one of my friends out there, and on Monday, and then yesterday he told me he'd begun uh, passing gas in, in his passing gas in his wife's vicinity, and then he he would tell her that he was caringly performing a health check on her. <laughs> <laughs> when she reacted to him, so. nothing but love, honey. Yeah. So, nothing so that br that brings up, you know. So I, I was thinking about this. It brings up, you know, it's like if, if you could be walking down one of the store aisles with your pants on, your underwear on, and you can crop dust people, and uh, they can smell it. I mean, how good is, how good could that mask be? <laughs> well, honey, your farts are pretty potent. I will tell you. Yes. Now remember, the face covering is only to yeah. protect other people from you. I th so. I, well, I think so. They they probably pull it up over their eyes. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. the them one on your them. mouth is going to help with that. Yeah. that so problem. I'm thinking to myself, if you you know, you can still smell with that mask on. I mean, really, you're how, standing too close. Six foot ain't, ain't far enough. Six foot bitches. Six foot. Everybody, thirty foot down. <laughs> All right, don't be well, get back up. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I've, I've really pissed off some people in my... <laughs> no. Yeah. I find that very hard to believe. Oh, <clears throat> oh yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm proud of that, too. That's awesome. We're like... like my, brother's, my brother, Stephen, he... <laughs> we were in tech, I was in Texas uh, some years back, and uh, it was a bad night. <laughs> and I don't, I'm not going to tell the story, but... I guarantee you, Steve, if you're watching, I guarantee you, you're laughing your ass off right now. <laughs> it was the worst, the worst, it was like when I made Skippy throw up, it was oh. that bad. It was the funniest friggin' thing. And we were, he was laughing and crying and, and coughing so bad in the car, with, even when we had the windows down, that we actually sat through a red light and people were beeping the horn behind us. Because he, I, because I he couldn't I, stop he, laughing. He couldn't, could, yeah, he couldn't even drive. He was laughing so friggin' hard he couldn't even drive. It was the one of the uh, uh, most embarrassing times of my life. But one of the, the you want to talk about history, <laughs> history together. Oh my goodness, it was so friggin' funny. It was great. And then I, Nancy, my sister-in-law, she's all like, "What the hell are you guys doing?" <laughs> 
<laughs> People are beeping the horn. Oh my well, god. Well, Polis bad. is out here. Uh, Steven said he is, Steve is watching, but Polis said it's paint peeling kind of story. <laughs> that's Boy, right, you hit Jeffrey. That one right on right the head, head Bodine. That's bad. That's bad. Bodine, you know it. And Steven's watching, so he can. It's Steven on here, right? Who? Steve Williams. I'll just call him Steve. I call him Steve. stupid most of the time, but that's all right. Stefan. Stefan. St- Stefan. Stefan. So it's just the three of us tonight. Yeah, it is. Uh, Sidecar is uh, we got, away, yeah. and uh, one we have one uh, in the live studio audience here tonight. Mr. Dick Brandt, welcome right. aboard. Glad to see you're here. It's nice to see you all. Look at you. He's Look got the you. whole casting couch to Holy himself. Cow. You want me to get somebody down here with a fan and some grapes for you, or what? What do you need, Don? You good? All right. See. <laughs> he's not saying nothing. He's, keeping, he's smart. He keeps his mouth shut. <laughs> yeah. Steve said he couldn't breathe. <laughs> Brother, that was uh, one of the best times ever. <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't there. There's a whole story that goes along with it, but oh my god! Oh, uh, the whole story afterwards. We went, went to over to Mike's house, and one of the guys uh, that worked for Steve. It. Yeah, no, it was just so much fun. It was so much fun. The story is hilarious. Well, I know it's they're so bad because in the middle of the night you've woken me up and I've turned over. I blame that shit on the dog. Uh uh-uh, uh no uh uh-uh. uh. Right. They're too cute to do that. That's it. <laughs> too funny. I don't know how we got to that conversation. But yeah, I don't know either. But it was good conversation. <laughs> like most of the stuff we talk about, I don't know how we get there. Yeah. We never, hey, we're not, uh, what do they call that? I don't even want to say. Planners? Well, yeah. <laughs> we're not planners. Unfortunately, I have that mentality that I usually spit out the first thing that comes to mind. And unfortunately, my humor is rock bottom. But anyway, so that's <laughs> That's it a, happens. That's all I got to say. It happens. <laughs> we had a couple of questions on last week's show. I did post uh, about, I was asked about my top five single malts, and um, I posted on that. Um, Colila 18, McAllen Edition 1, um, Highland Park 18, Lafroy Carderas, and um, the 14 Caribbean Cast. Oh, you're five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, then, was it hard to come up with that list, or I took some thought, um, you know, and that's subject to change, like anybody, as time goes on. But, uh, and then I did confirm that, uh, uh, as far as Colin's question last week, that yeah, in fact, Isla is not in any danger of running low on peat. So I was going to say I didn't. I, met, I never heard that. I think Campbelltown is where that kind of originated they are they are they have a rockier terrain so they don't have as much boggy mm-hmm. areas so yeah i didn't i, didn't I think say they that. might be importing some uh peat from from iowa oh, gotcha but, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't comment on that because i'm not that diverse in scotches but i was like man i i read a lot of different things but i never never heard well we it. did do a show on it some time ago but uh, which we'll we'll do again we'll we'll revisit that topic I'm sure at some point. So, so let, can, I, can I bring can I bring one more thing up about my little yeah. incident with oh, my okay. brother yeah, in Texas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, geez, yeah. Steven, I know you're listening. So, what would have made that 110 percent great is if Donnelly was stuck in the back seat. It would have made, it would have made it worth all while there. So anyway, I just wanted to throw that in there. <laughs> mm. So what are we smoking this week? I am smoking a uh, Cao Brasilia. So Brazilian uh, Maduro wrapper, Ecuadorian blend. It's one of your favorites now, it is. isn't it? Yeah, I always like the Brazilias. You're a big C- CAO fan I am a fan huge anyway. CAO fan. I, I, You know what? I'm embarrassed to say I don't even know. So it I might or that yeah. might be Brazilian yeah. tobacco? Or? Yeah, it is Brazilian tobacco. Okay. But, but uh, yeah, so I grabbed a couple of boxes, and I'm going to try and grab a few more. What's that? What's that, Dick? That's not a lot of trouble, yeah. No, this is a this is still CEO, but it's not La Triviana. Brasilia, you said. Yeah, Brazilian, Brazilian tobacco and Ecuadorian <laughs> and Nicaraguan blends. I'm gonna let that what, skip over. What happened? You said Brazilian. I was gonna go to a bad place, but oh, it's all good. good. I thought you were gonna get a wax, but oh, I'll be there three weeks, but I'm alright with that. Well, sorry, first. That's just for my toes. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know I could make a thousand. Hair blankets, trust me. Anybody get, anybody needs a blanket? Alpacas over, and llamas got okay. nothing on you, man. 
Nothing. I tell you, I, I think I'm the only kid hairier than my mother, you know? <laughs> Hang on. Sorry, Mom, I was only kidding. Hope it's still warm down there. <laughs> so, uh, Daniel Ruth said that's a great stick you're smoking. Thank you, Daniel. Knows his cigars. Good man. Yeah, shout out to Dan checking us out this week. He's the one that has the Sunday Cigar and Whiskey podcast, mm -hmm. or not podcast, mm -hmm. uh, Zoom call that, that uh, I participate you, in whenever I can. Give me that. I don't have that. I don't think I have that link, do I? Huh? Well, we'll make sure you're on the yeah, next one. Yeah, yeah can, we love that. You, yeah, why don't you join us? Sunday. Oh, one. Usually it's Sunday at 4 or something like that. So okay. You know how to do that, do I have to set that up for you? No, you have to do it for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. It's all good. I you wouldn't be on Facebook if it wasn't for uh, the Since here. we've been doing that, it cuts my Sundays a little short. After I have uh, a few whiskeys and a mm -hmm. cigar, I notice that uh, my nights aren't as Sunday nights aren't as long as they used to. My father always says, "Put off today what you can do tomorrow." So don't worry about. <laughs> oh, Joe. So I've got a Tatiana chocolate cigar. Nice. That you uh, get from Royal Havana. Royal Havana, Havana cigars. Havana. Dave gave us uh, six cigars for you today. So. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, he just posted that they're getting ready to open up. Open up. up. That's on right. The, on the first. On the first. So mm -hmm. um, I know um, you always tell everybody to go in and visit. Check and it mention, out, man. Uh, Whiskey Roundtable. Amen. And, Amen. And he'll give you a discount. Give you a discount. Ten percent on top of fifteen percent minus three percent. Go get your discount. Just kidding. Oh he does. He'll give you 10% off on your first purchase. Just mention and Big G or the Whiskey Roundtable. Big table. G or the Whiskey Wizard or, or even uh, Karen. Mention mention mm -hmm. anything for the Whiskey Roundtable. We'll take care of you. I'm telling you right now. So we have had, we have had some people go in, and uh, you know, uh, one or two of those people are current customers, so which is good, new current customers. So, right. so it's good. So uh, it's a great atmosphere there. You, you'd be surprised who hangs out there. And... Uh, you know, we get a lot, you get a lot, like especially like uh, uh, last year with the Cavaliers and some of the guys. I forget what teams they, what team they were playing against, but they they called after a game, after the game was over, and they asked how late they'd be, how late they'd be open. They they seven eight ball players were out there. We put them in a nice little spot, let them do their thing. Nobody bothered them, you know. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, it's that kind of place. And Ernest Dave's, Biner is I was a customer. Say, and, Dave's uh, post, he just yeah. had a couple uh, Cleveland Browns. Ernest yeah. Biner was one of them, so we, it's pretty uh, cool. We got together last night uh, in an indisclosed location, undisclosed location, excuse me, and uh, we watched the draft yesterday and all that stuff, so it was cool. You watched the draft? I yeah. did watch the draft yesterday. Mm -hmm. Plus, uh, you know, Steve Turingo, um, who, who was talk about a great guy, uh, Coaches for the Browns, coaches for the Cleveland Indians, believe it or not. Great guy. Our neighbor, good dude. Um, good people. His wife's a sweetheart. Good, just great people. So So do we want to show everyone a little bit about Royal Havana? I'm, I'm yeah, gonna... why don't we do that? We'll take a, break. Uh, we'll take a little break, uh, hear a word from one of our sponsors, and we'll be right back with you in a few minutes. See you in a minute, kids. Hang Bye. tight. Hi, it's the gang from the Whiskey Roundtable here. We're not here to talk about whiskey. We're here to talk about cigars, Royal Havana Cigars. Royal Havana Cigars is located at 38448 Lakeshore Boulevard in Willoughby, Ohio. That's 38448 Lakeshore Boulevard in Willoughby, Ohio. Royal Havana Cigar Lounge is tailored to an old 50s, 60s Cuban theme with a friendly atmosphere. Their walk-in humidor is filled with top cigar brands. Trust us, you're bound to find the cigar you're looking for. Royal Havana's friendly atmosphere and comfortable accommodations gives you the opportunity to relax in one of their fine chairs and enjoy a fine cigar. Try one of their house brand cigars. Royal Havana house brand cigars are rolled fresh every week. Not to mention the price is right. What else does Royal Havana offer, you ask? Let us tell you. Check out Royal Havana's large inventory of lighters, cutters, butane, lockers for rent, ashtrays, rocks glasses, and coffee cups. And hey ladies, Royal Havana has gift cards and a clothing boutique. And while you're there, check out the humidor for the fine line of cigars tailored to a woman's taste. That's right, we said it. They have cigars that are specially designed for a woman's enjoyment. Visit Royal Havana Cigars at gmail.com for all of Royal Havana's up-and-coming cigar events. 
They also host public and private events like weddings, family get-togethers, golf outings, wine tastings, just to name a few. So next time you're in the area, stop in at Royal Havana Cigars and see owner Dave Somrock and mention the name Big G from the Whiskey Roundtable, and you'll receive 10% off your first cigar purchase. Listen, we know what some of you are thinking. You can get a cigar anywhere. But hey, at Royal Havana, you can only get a good cigar. That's Royal Havana Cigars, located at 38448 Lakeshore Boulevard in Willoughby, Ohio, and tell them Big G from the Whiskey Roundtable sent you. All right, so All right, there you got there to you see go. a little bit about the uh, Royal Havana. Cigars. Absolutely. Opening up in a week. Same Opening day up that in a week, uh, yeah. break, breaks out the maple. Absolutely. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh, uh, uh, Derek's watching on YouTube. Hey, Derek. Debo. Hey. That's right. That's his nickname. How can we forget? Me and, De- me and Debo got a lot of history together. So, what are we featuring this week? We are featuring uh, Powers. Powers uh, three Swallow. Three Swallow. Three yeah. Swallow. Yeah. It comes in a really cool blue box. I love the box. I'm going to show I, the box. Can I show the box? Yeah, yeah show the box. I, um, that's what caught my eye, actually. Cause Powers 3 Swallow Irish Whiskey. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I know we've had the Powers before with Joe. And, yeah, um, right. We, I saw this at the store with the you know blue box. It was the only bottle on the shelf. We were we were over in the west side. I forget for what reason. West side? West side! We were... Uh, <laughs> We were over there, and there was a. I said, "Karen, look up liquor stores." It was pouring rain. It was uh, winter time, but it wasn't like cold out. It was just like a miserable day, like Cleveland usually is. But um, so we went and hit a couple liquor stores, and uh, I saw that bottle, and I almost didn't buy it. And Karen's like, "Just get it." She goes, "How much is that?" I said, it's forty bucks. But I, you know, eh. I said, you know, she goes, "Well, you know, you like the you like the powers, you know, you know, J- Joe likes the powers, you know, all that stuff, and." Uh, uh, so I ended up buying it. I ended up buying it, and uh, this is the first time we opened it. So it's a uh, my pre-tasting whiskey tonight is the Tier Canel, just to keep it in the Irish family. And yep, and I'm going to step which out of the we Irish featured, family. Featured uh, what a couple, couple weeks couple, ago. Couple two, three weeks three ago. Three weeks maybe. ago, maybe three I'm, shows ago. Anyway, I'm drinking Maker's Mark Private Select, 110.1 proof, and uh, it's pretty damn good. So I cracked this bottle up. It's not a pansy whiskey. That's no, it's not. Not at 110 proof. It's not. Nope. So I was. Uh, I don't know where we got this, but for some reason I think we have a few. But I think right. I got that up at Pat O'Brien's Did over you? there in. Uh, what is that? Pepper Pike. Pepper Pike. Yeah. Great yep. place. Great little store. Mm-hmm. We took sidecar there. Um, this week. Yeah, this week. He was. He was having fun in there. Yeah. Sidecar's not here, like you said. He's. What did we buy there? I bought traveling. There. He's traveling. We bought uh, a bullet. Oh, that bullet! Uh, the new bullet that just came out. Special edition yeah. bullet. Yeah. Haven't tried that yet, have Mm-mm. we? You know, I got a lot of different bullets. We should try some of those. I'm learning how to open my bottles, which is something I'm not used to. So. No, it isn't. You gotta learn to drive that car in the garage too. I day. do need to learn how to drive that car in the garage. Mm-hmm. One of these days. It's probably you're kind of probably gonna have a lot more fun if you take it out of the garage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he does. The Watch problem it. is, I then love that car. I love that car. I don't love that car as much as I love Jimbo. Crying tomorrow. <laughs> trust me when I tell you. Yeah, <laughs> <going. laughs> yeah. Who cook for me? <laughs> Captain Crunch gonna cook for me. That's who's gonna cook for me. Exactly. <laughs> they wash my clothes. There we go. We'll take um, my snow off the car. No. Uh huh. I'll just have to heat it up earlier. Huh? That's right. So I'll send pictures. Karen, what can you tell us about uh, Three Swallow Irish Whiskey? Let me tell you a little bit about Three Swallow. Right. Let's do some history, kids. So, back it up, we'll do a little bit of history. 1791, James Power, he was actually an innkeeper in Dublin, he established the distillery at his public house at 109 Thomas Street in Dublin. Its first year, it had 6,000 gallons of distribution. Then in 1823, they moved moved the distillery. They began expanding, 
And by 1827, it was now called John Power and Son, and their production was estimated to be over 160,000 gallons. So eight, what? Yeah. 1823. Because that's well, still pretty early in the history of right. whiskey. So in terms of commercial distillation, commercial scale distillation. So that's pretty good. That, it is. Yeah. Uh, the, the distillery continued to grow. And then by 1880, they had built a Victorian style distillery. And it was one of the more impressive sites in Dublin. They, they were now producing up to 900,000 gallons per year. And what I found interesting is that the distillery covered six acres in central Dublin, which six acres in a city is huge. Yeah, it's a lot. Uh, it, and it employed 300 people at the time, back in 1880. Yeah. By 1886, uh, John Power and Son began bottling their own whiskey. So rather than the usual practice at the time, which was to sell the whiskey to the merchants and the bonders, and then they would bottle it themselves, they were the first Dublin distillery to do that, and one of the first in the world as well. Um, the last member of the Powers family to sit on the board was Sir Thomas Talbot Power. Uh, he passed in 1930, and the distillery did remain in the Powers family up until 1966. And then 1966, there was a lot of competition in the whiskey market. They were still trying to recover from Prohibition. Scotch whiskey really started to rise in popularity and the Irish whiskey industry was having some issues. So there were three remaining distillers in the Irish Republic. You had John Powers and Son, um, Cork Distilleries, and Jameson, of course, and they merged to form the Irish Distillers. And then soon after they opened Irish Distillers, they closed down their individual distilleries and they consolidated production at the New Middleton distillery and that one was opened in 1975 uh, since and at that yeah at that but, time that Irish whiskey is still going through some hard times so and whiskey in general right took a pretty big dive in the 70s yeah absolutely in the late 60s everybody was turning to the clear spirits like vodka of course mm. beer my favorite yeah. <laughs> no right I know can you believe it you got a beer problem. No, no problem. <laughs> so since the closure of the main Powers Distillery, many of the distillery buildings were demolished. Uh, some of the buildings were incorporated into the National College of Art and Design, and they're now protected structures. So I thought it was really cool that they had built this Victorian building to be their distillery because I love Victorian homes, Victorian houses. Right. I wasn't able to find if that was still part of the National College of Art and Design, but I know one of the things we wanted to do was try to get to Ireland this summer, and that, because of everything going on, has fallen kind through. Fallen through right. um, but when we do go there, I would love to try to find to see you know, where it stood and if that's still there. That'd be cool. Just to take a look that's at a, that. That's a uh, Doug Dunbar and Sh Shauna trip. There you go. Yeah. Have you been you to can, Ireland, Doug? No, it's on my list. Okay. All right, well then, oh jeez. So you had to say Skyline again as soon as possible. Uh, 1989, Irish distilleries became a subsidy of Pernod Ricard. Pernod, okay. Pernod Ricard, yeah. Okay. And some interesting things about the Powers family members. So John Power, who was the grandson of the founder, he was awarded a baronet, which is a hereditary title awarded by the British Crown. And then his son, which was John Powers' great-grandson, became the High Sheriff of Dublin in 1859. Ah. So they have a little uh, not notoriety, I guess you could say, in their family. It's a blue blood. There you go. Powers 3 Swallow, I'll get a little bit on the product that we're talking about. The name of it plays, or pays homage to the Powers family coachman. So to keep them warm in the harsh Irish winters, the three coachmen would each take a swallow from their hip flask. So three swallows. Three swallows. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. So, and Doug, you said if it was warm, they would probably take two, so it could have been called the six swallow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sure that, I'm sure there were plenty of times that there was more than one 
swallow of purple. A lot of swallowing going on yeah, over yeah, there. Yeah. That's all I know. Yeah, That's if I was can't there, wait to get there. Yeah. If we were there, <laughs> if we were there, Coachman, it would have been called the Three yeah. Gulp. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They'd be selling that one seven five. I ain't playing. Right. <laughs> so the three swallow features in all singular, all singular characteristics of traditional Irish pot still whiskey: robust and spicy and smooth. It's um, matured in second and third filled bourbon barrels to ensure the flavor of the distillate is at the forefront. And while a small component of sherry aged whiskey adds balance and finesse, which you're going to go into the finish for the, the Whiskey Wizard. Yeah, that happens to be the topic this week on the Whiskey Wizard. So, But uh, yeah, it's, it's a single pot still whiskey. So that means it's an Irish whiskey made by a single distillery. And uh, typically, they're going to be a mix. The mash is going to be a mix of 50% malted barley and 50% unmalted barley. And uh, so, in similar in concept to a single malt whiskey, um, but again, difference is that inclusion of unmalted raw barley in the mash bills. And it's a 86.4 proof. Right. Yep. So again, sticking with the Irish lower proof whiskeys. Yeah, I don't, um, I guess that's right. It's about the same as this one. Mm -hmm. They're all usually yeah. under the 90 proof range than the Irish whiskeys. So I know, Doug, you've got some uh, tasting notes too. I don't know if we want to go into Before that. We taste, yeah, I'll read some of my favorite distillers app notes. It's oily and lovely with a generally rich, but not super deep profile. The aroma is lovely combination of sweets and lightly rustic notes. The palate is similar to the aroma, but pulls out a bit more depth and comes across a bit richer than the aroma. The finish is a nice fade, uh, and then it, it's missing, uh, they said it's missing a little bit of depth, but there's nice complexity, heavy and oily and nice. Teeters on a B plus A and is a good representative of how lovely, delicious, and interesting Irish whiskey can be. This one's definitely worth picking up if you're a fan of the category, and I'm certainly becoming one. So, mm -hmm. the more we've been featuring them on the show. So. Awesome. What do you got? Yeah, I'm reading comments. Gotcha. So, yep. All right. I have people are, what people are drinking out there today. Right. and uh, Well, let's hear some so, uh, Jennifer Box, <laughs> uh, first pour was a barrel infinite, 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 barrel project cask strength, and her current pour is a chicken cock. I don't know if you mean. No, I think there is, I think there is a whiskey out there called chicken cock. Fighting cock? Know. Is it No, it's not similar? fighting I mean, cock. I think it's, it is, I'm almost positive there's a chicken cock out there. So what, uh, Jennifer, what style of whiskey is that? For apparently uh, us unfamiliar folks. Uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, Colin is drinking Weller Antique Store Pick. Oh, uh, nice. Nicely done. You know, we love our store picks here. I'll tell you what, the, the, the Antique 107 Lizardville Pick is probably the best I've ever had. Is Dan drinking his Anyak? What's he drinking tonight? Um, he Chris, doesn't say. Chris not on today? No, Chris. Apparently not. What? We've got, we got Glenn. He's probably sleeping. Glenn of the Hilo Buddies. Glenn, what are you drinking? Let us know. Gotta get with him. Maybe Sunday. We've got to get right. we some things to talk about. So the the powers, uh, this particular whiskey is retail somewhere in the neighborhood of $50. Yeah, I right. think I paid forty for it, but it hovers between thirty-five and fifty bucks. Yeah. I think I think we paid about forty dollars for that, if I remember correctly. So yeah, we, I think I saw it online anywhere between yeah. like thirty-five, fifty-five dollars, sure. depending on where you're so, uh, picking it up. So should I pass it on? Yeah, let's do it. You can here. I'll just pass them around. You know, we're going to change the way we do this next week. And Charlie Brown said he's drinking a Spring Bank. Spring Bank. Here oh, we go again. Nice choice, I, I Chuck. Nice that. choice. I think uh, starting next week, we're going to put the bottle to one side and the glasses are here so we don't have to get up. We just need to pass them around. 
Shame on me. We need a lazy Susan. We Dick's here. <laughs> hey, Susie. <laughs> What's up, Susie? Oh, you finally shaved. <laughs> Glenn, also known as Charlie Brown, is drinking a 15-year-old spring bank, which I said. Yes. Well, I, I, I've said that last week that I'm I'm excited about uh, Camel Towns, and I plan to stock up a little bit on spring bank and a few of the other ones there. It's, doesn't, it's not a big region, but... Um, it's unique. I'm, I'm going to explore that one. Probably, uh, it's the last area to really for me to dive into. So I'm going in on the right, smell so here, and I'm getting let's a whole lot. This. I'm getting a honey, and I'm getting fruit. Like a white, uh, like a I don't want to say a pear, but I'm getting I'm getting grass. Maybe it is pear. I'm actually getting a little bit of like almost some banana. There must be a, a lot of esters in here. Um, maybe a maybe a just a, maybe a barely a hint of banana. Um, I'm not so getting a full banana like I would like out of a roasted rye or something. But like a roast rice roast apples. Obviously oak and. You know your vanilla and stuff like that, but there's something yeah. else in there I can't put my I'm my, like a, my nose on. A white so. grape? No. Yeah, that could be like the Man. apple tones. I, uh, I maybe, get some, maybe some. Uh, yeah, apple. I won't say green apple, but I I get some. I get a little apple out of it. The vanilla's there. Yeah, probably from the uh, aging and first fill bur bourbon cask. So I took some uh, notes off the actual Powers website, and they're saying green banana and okay. grapefruit. There you go. I wasn't imagining. Okay. Yep. You Gra said grapefruit? Grapefruit. I don't get the grapefruit. Maybe I'll get it on the flavor. And yeah. a nutty nose of marzipan. Mmm. Mmm. Maybe. Mmm. Okay. Getting something. You got, uh, you got some notes, though. No, no. No? Okay. So are we ready to yeah, balance let's, this let's, uh, let's Let's beat this up. Let's do it, right? It's a nice pour, I must say. Thank you. Hey, it's been a long week. I'm trying to figure out what it is I'm I, tasting. I, I, uh, you all might laugh at me. I don't... Uh, it's just my palate. I almost get a... Uh, Aftertaste of a uh, minty aroma. Hmm. I'm picking up a little bit of that kind of marzipan. I think that's how I guess it's like a almond and marshmallow almost kind of. A... I get the apple on the taste. I get the apple. I don't get the grass. I get it on the nose, but I don't get it on the flavor. I'm limited. I'm limited to what I'm getting out of it. It's good. It is good. It's, it's very it's good. It's good. It's just hard for me to get a slight a, a slight peppery on the on the uh, on the aftertaste. You get a little bit of burn, but not nothing terrible. For eighty six proof. Yeah. I'm surprised at that spiciness that you get. Yeah, I, I think it drinks higher than an 80, 86 proof. I would say it probably drinks more like a ninety proof, but that's just my personal opinion. But it's I good. Still get, I'm still getting the banana Are you? on the palate and um, a little bit of the, I guess what I call apple, and then some nut, some like almond. Mm. So, all right, I'm gonna try it one more time. I like. It's good, but I, it's a, like I'm everything a, meshes together for me. It's hard to break out the different tastes. I'm gonna. I, I'm going to give it a few minutes. It definitely has some legs and oiliness yeah. to it. Um, it definitely has some oiliness. For an Irish whiskey, particularly, yeah. it's it, it's got legs. I I'm a fan. I like it. I do too. Much. All right, Karen Helen Keller, that was another one of your bottle picks. Yep. Yeah, that's just because it had a pretty box. 
I like very, the color. very uh, sippable. Yeah. Yep. That's how I pick my horses, too. Oh, that one's pretty. That one's going to win. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I like I, it. I, yeah, I do. Yeah. I do like it. There's. A, I feel like there's a, a fresh, like a refreshing kind of fruity taste to it, but there's yeah. also a spicy aftertaste to right. it. So it all kind of comes together from beginning to end. I seem to think that, in my personal opinion, again, um, I think a lot of times with, with the pot still, it seems to be, can be a little bit more uh, peppery on the uh, on the lower proofs, if that makes any sense to you. You know, so, you know, I go back to like Willet and stuff like that, which I know is not Irish whiskey, I get it, but, you know, it, it almost, it, it doesn't drink like a, a, a Willet, but it's, it has that same uh, little bit of a burn, so to say, even though it's a lower proof. And I, I, I seem to see a pattern in uh, pot stilling um, with stuff like that, if that makes any sense. Yeah, so. yeah and I think I, for I, because of that use of the raw barley in Irish whiskey, I think you, you do get a lot more of those light, kind of fresh flavors. Right. Which is something that I'm learning to appreciate from Irish whiskey because that's that's a pretty pretty big difference between the Irish and, and Scottish whiskeys and certainly American whiskeys. Awesome. On the nose, I get a lot of green apple right now. I get a, I, on the nose. I get I, I'm gonna hit try it again, but I, on the nose, I get the first thing I got was like like really like grass. I do get apple. I don't know if it's green apple, but I do get an apple. Um, I got a little bit of that banana that you talked about earlier, but I don't get it now. But it's nice. It's yeah, nice. I think it's very comforting, for sure. It's a nice, smooth, enjoyable dram. It is. I agree. Nice. I do like it definitely. If for forty bucks, oh my gosh, you can't. Yeah. Well, you know, we've always said that. You know, any anybody that wants to start. You know that is interested in whiskey but maybe he's never had it and they're a little apprehensive but um, you know Irish whiskeys is the best place to start it's a really I good place, to, place start. to start <clears throat> get an exposure to what a malt whiskey is about and so it's you know it's a it's a lot like a Scottish whiskey without the peatiness and smokiness so. and uh, so yeah it's good it's a good starter this would be a good starter for uh, folks, just like this, uh, the Tier Canal, the right. Pure Pot Still that we did. Uh, I mean, the three the weeks pricing, ago. The pricing on this, the standard Irish whiskeys is you can't beat it. You know, thirty, twenty some dollars to maybe forty some dollars, and you could drink some really good whiskey. In my personal opinion, and Irish whiskey is coming back, and they're starting to do a lot more. Um, you know, as far as the variety and coming out with new offerings and trying to do a, a, a good, you know, put a good showing up in the marketplace and the, the tastings and, and the events that are out there. So, so Irish whiskey is coming on. So awesome. Good for that. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, I like it. I got, uh, just to kind of switch gears a little bit, we were asking about that chicken cock. Yep. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Jennifer says chicken cock was established in 1856 in Paris, Bourbon County, Kentucky. I asked her, um, who's the distiller? So I don't know if you know that, Jennifer, but uh, just kind of curious who does yeah. it. And uh, Short Bus, he is uh, going home. So he's done working. He went to work today? I know. Hey, it is Friday. <laughs> Too funny. Yeah, I don't know if, if uh, Chicken Cock is the distiller. Or if it's like the part brand, of the offering, yeah. brand offering. And by the way, I just yeah. like saying chicken cock. Yeah, so yeah. I'm just going to keep throwing one. it out. So there. chicken that's cock right. is, is an actual thing. I think I thought I saw chicken cock somewhere. Uh, you know, just scrolling through for different things that I was interested in, and I thought I saw that because I kind of referred. I was like chicken cock. Wait a minute, but that's Kentucky, right? That's what she said. Yeah. Kentucky, yeah so. Yep. Uh, Paris, Bourbon County. Bourbon Kentucky. County. I yeah, have to pick a bottle up. That's as pretty Kentucky as you can get. I already got the fighting cock. I might as well get the chicken cock too. You know there we go. <laughs> yeah. We have a cock fight. <laughs> oh, 
Joe's watching. He said he's definitely a Powers fan, and uh, he's looking to try this. All right, Joe. All right, Joe. Yeah. All right, dog. I said, I, you know, because he, I think he's the one that originally turned us on to Powers. Yeah, yeah right. Joe turned us on to a lot of good stuff. He really so did. So that's, you know, that's why I bought it. You got to so. give him his props. Absolutely. And this, uh, this particular whiskey is just aged in first fill bourbon casks. But uh, as we um, will find out shortly, uh, a lot of whiskeys, Scottish and American whiskeys, uh, have a go through a, a process called finishing. So that's right. what we're going to talk about. You want to get to that on today's uh, Whiskey Wizard episode? Yeah, why don't we do why it? Don't we, why don't we roll? Um, so right. we'll be uh, back in a few moments after we uh, hear from the whiskey, whiskey yep. wizard. All yep. right, Six see you kids minutes. in a minute. Six minutes, kids. Don't and, go nowhere. And don't miss this intro. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, you got to watch cool. the intro. Whiskey don't miss wizard. It's the whiskey wizard. Hello and welcome to the Whiskey Wizard, where we say that whiskey making takes scientific knowledge and artisan skill and dedication and a bit of the wizard's alchemy of light, air, earth, and fire. So this week we're going to finishing schools at work, meaning that we're going to discuss the concept of cask finishing whiskey. As this is something the shopper will quickly note as they read the labels of various whiskey products available at their local retailer or in the electronic marketplace. Finishing is the process whereby a whiskey is first matured in a cask of one kind for most of its maturation and then spends some additional time in a cask of a different origin, usually for an additional few months to perhaps as much as a few years. This second or additional cask aging is called finishing. Most often for Scottish whiskey, the first cask is going to be an American oak cask, formerly used to mature bourbon known as a first fill bourbon cask. As you may recall, bourbon making typically utilizes newly made unused American oak barrels that are first toasted and charred on the inside before being filled with new make spirit. After many years of service aging the American whiskey spirit, they are often then shipped across the pond and purchased by Scottish whiskey makers. I love the symbiosis between American and Scottish whiskey industries. A typical Scottish single malt whiskey matures in ex bourbon casks for most of its comparatively long aging period. Then it may be transferred to a second finishing cask. The second cask may be one that had previously been used to mature some sort of fortified wine, often sherry. All of these finishing options add many colors to the potential whiskey flavor spectrum, adding many subtle tones to the distilling artist's palette. Maybe some purists disagree, but I love the diversity of choices this provides for the creative distiller and the whiskey consumer alike. Let's look at some of the containers often used in the aging and secondary finishing of whiskeys. Of course, we have a barrel at roughly 200 liters this is where most of the maturation usually takes place. The hogshead at 250 liters and the butt or sherry butt at 500 liters. Beyond that, we even have the port pipe and Madeira drums weighing in at a hefty 650 liters. Remember, there's about 3.8 liters per gallon. All right, frankly, in my experience, finishing adds depth of color and favorable complexity, both with respect to a whiskey's flavor and its aromatics. Sometimes finishing is called double matured, where finishing might also include a fresh French oak or American oak cask to accentuate a new oak contribution to the finish. These are a favorite of mine. Some of the more well-known finished whiskeys include Balvenie Double Wood, which is finished in sherry casks, Glenlivet American Oak Finish and French Oak Finish, which are finished in brand new casks of the respective woods. And Angel's Envy Bourbon, which is finished in port and rum barrels. And I can't forget my cherished Blood Oath Pack 5 Bourbon aged well in ex-rum casks. 
I suppose we have to pay homage to Dr. Bill Lumsden at Glen Morangi. In the 1980s, he became recognized as the foremost leader in the cask finishing movement. No one did more than Lumsden to make it the mainstay of the whiskey industry that it is today. Glen Morangi now offers a wide range of finishings, such as their Sherry Port, Madeira, and Burgundy finished whiskeys. Look, there are even beer finished offerings out there. Here are some of my other personal favorites. The Balvenie 14 Caribbean cask finish, the Tomatin 12 Sherry cask finished, about any Glen Morangi offering, and in a category of its own, I would say the Macallan, especially its edition series. Its edition number one is one of my very favorites, even though they have all been outstanding thus far. Here's the number four that I currently have. The edition whiskeys use various first fill French and American oak barrels and other container sizes formerly used for aging various fortified wines and marries them together and then finishes them in additional wine spirit butts and hog heads. The resulting complex wood and dark fruit nuance spirit simply has to be tried. I'll leave it at that. Finishing is widespread and the practice continues to grow in the bourbon and American whiskey industry as well. Cask finishing is just one other tool distillers have in working toward constructing a broader range of taste experiences and varieties of expression within their brand offerings. Hope you are all including an array of these finished whiskeys in your home collections. So I guess it's time for me to be finishing. That's all for now. This is Doug Dunbar, the Whiskey Wizard for the Whiskey Roundtable. And now back to the live show. Nice job, Dougie. Beautiful. So what's your favorite finish? I, I mean, you, you want to talk about it before we just jump into me, like, rapid-firing questions at you? Or? No, I think it, you know, it, finishing has become such a big part of the whole whiskey market that, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to believe that secondary finishing or secondary cask finishing was really just a kind of a relatively new thing just a few decades ago. So um, I personally, I think it's responsible for a lot of the, today's different variety and enthusiasm that's out there so um, what's my favorite finish yeah so I don't know I mean I was thinking about that I it just depends a lot on the individual whiskey and how well they do it um, I do like those McAllen edition series but that's really kind of in a class all of its own because they're they're doing a lot of first fill um, Casking and then they marry those together and then they do a second and blend those so But um, if you haven't tried those I recommend it um, But I really kind of I mean I I just found that I really like the Caribbean cask or rum cask mm -hmm. Finish uh, both in bourbons and, and single malts. That's, that I think tried, Joe's so. favorite too. Yeah, so that yeah, I think uh, That's a nice combo Again, it brings out a lot of that caramel and and uh, kind of, I think it even balances, it brings out the fruit even more with the rum, so. You, on, on there you talked about, I didn't catch it, all of it, but we talked about the leaders of the barrel. And, you know, I'm not metric system, so to say. So you had said so many liters in a barrel, which uh, equates to 3.8. Oh, yeah. In the picture, those barrels look like they're bigger barrels are they all the same size like that well you got your the the uh, kind of the hogshead is about 250 okay so a little bit bigger, bigger. than a barrel um, and then you know you, you've got your sherry butt which is about 500 so uh, about twice as big as the hogshead mm -hmm. then we got the pork pipe and the Madeira casts that go up there to 600 the Madeira is fantastic you know. Yeah, so yeah. again, those are going to be X, X sherry port casks that are just used for finishing. Nice. In the, in the context of whiskey. So. Awesome. So here's what I get out of that one you've got Hog's Head, which I think is funny. Yeah, yeah. And you've got a bunch of guys' butts named yeah. up on that, that, <laughs> that box. What was yeah. up with that? 
He's yeah, an yeah, ass yeah. man. Leave him alone. He's an ass man. That was the uh, McAllen edition number four that I, I have a little bit left of. Um, I got the edition one as a gift, and it was just incredible. Um, that McAllen edition one uh, is now going for about fifteen hundred dollars a bottle. Holy cow! So I, I wish I had gotten another one back then um, and hung on to it. But anyway, maybe we should. I should hunt that down. But you if should. you ever get a chance for McAllen edition number one, they're all great. But that that one in particular. The first year was outstanding. Awesome. So Jennifer said Basil Hayden's Caribbean Reserve Rye is excellent. And I think we've had the Basil Hayden's Caribbean cask. Have we had? Because I at first I was like, oh, yeah, that's great. Because I was thinking of the other one. Have we had the Reserve Rye? Was it the Reserve Rye we had? They did a sherry. Um, uh, no. They did a sherry finished. I don't think it was um, a Reserve Rye. Rye or don't they have a sherry finished? Um there, the, Basil Hayden, which I wasn't a fan of. Right. I wasn't a fan of it either. So it was too either. whiny. It, something wasn't very balanced about it, in my opinion. But. All right. So. Huh. Yeah, if you disagree, let us know. Yeah, that's, that's, absolutely. I love that. That's part absolutely. of why we're here. So. Can I uh, throw a special shout out to a couple people? Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. All right. We're going to do that every week. We're going to do a special shout out to people. I want to do a special shout out to a couple of little bratty kids that uh, my nephews are great kids. No fear. The brattiest. The, the brattiest of the brats, these two. Two little brothers, Trevor and Grady Polarchek. I know you two are watching the show, and uh, I'm glad you're watching the show. I miss you guys. And uh, once uh, everything is done here, here in the next week, uh, we're definitely going to get together. And do some riding on the four-wheelers. Yeah, we're going to do some riding on the four-wheelers and hang out. and uh, come over, fish in the pond. Yeah, we'll come over, we'll push you in the pond. I mean, you can fish in the <laughs> pond. And uh, But uh, good kids. Uh they crack me up, and uh, I love hanging out with them guys. So, uh, Trevor and Grady, I love you guys, and uh, I'll, Uncle Greg will see you soon, man. All right, cool. Hey, kids. Keep telling those fart jokes, because you know I laugh at those. <laughs> Little shits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Bye. Well, they're, so, they're so bad that you, you love them. You, you know what I mean? It's like, because no kids at that age do what these... These two little shitheads do. <laughs> no, no fear. No fear. At you mean all. that in the most loving I way? I do mean that in the most loving way. I love those kids. Great so, kids. So we got uh, what's on the news? What kind of what kind um, of whiskey news is? I only out? I only grabbed a little bit of news today. I was trying to get something else that I passed on last week and I, I couldn't do it. So uh, Buffalo Trace kids, an Ooh, experimental right. new twelve year weeded bourbon coming soon from Buffalo Trace. Ah. Twelve year you said? Twelve year. Twelve year. Hundred nice. proof. Hundred no, proof. Do they I mean besides um, the Pappy, uh, do they do any other weeded offerings? Oh yeah, all their wellers. All the well yeah, wellers you know, are, right. I forget. You know, all their all their stuff. So all you know their your bourbons better than I do. Yeah, that's yeah. one of your, your weeded yeah. bourbons are your favorite. Yeah, somebody is uh Colin. My favorite is that Colin shows. that's drinking a Wellers tonight? Yes, it yep. was Colin. All right, okay. Well so there we uh, go. Buffalo Trace Distillery has announced a new addition to their air experimental collection. A 12-year weeded recipe bourbon with an interesting proofing, uh, uh, in, what is that word? How do I pronounce oh, that? Oh gosh, I gotta get my, my in, glass. Interp Interruption. Interruption, see? Hey, sorry kids, I'm old. All right, uh, during the aging process, the, the uh, bourbon begins with Buffalo Trace's classic weeded bourbon recipe used for favorites like Weller, Pappy Van Winkle. Heard it here first. So Eagle, is Eagle work? Is Eagle Rare? Is that also a weed? Um, great question. I don't believe so. Okay. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. All right, you know, anyway. Sorry. Anyway, so uh, I lost my spot. While both of the brands are already home to a 12-year expression, the new arrival involves a bit of a, uh, what do you say, in interruption? Interruption. Interruption. <laughs> to Wait, at is that it the time same word the, or did it switch no, up? No, same on word. Oh, okay. okay. Just checking. Uh, the distillates was first put into the barrel at 114 oh, proof in December of 2007 and left to age for four years in Warehouse C. At the end of the first four years, the bourbon was dumped from the barrel to cut 100 proof and then uh, put back in the same barrel. It was aged in uh, another eight years in the Warehouse C. 
Finally, uh, it, it was bottled at 90 proof in March of 2020. Uh, we've always known that the water was a necessary component in making the whiskey. Yep. Started Masters Distillers uh, Harlan Wheat Wheatley. The experiment helped us understand how important the role was. Uh, water actually plays a, a big part in the whiskey production. So uh, the results of the experiment led us to a bourbon that is actually one of my favorite experiments. So generally the uh, water added to the bourbon in only two places while the bourbon must come off the still at less than 160 proof. Oh Ooh, shit. Can you imagine? It must enter the barrel at no less than 125 proof. So many distillers added water to their uh, white dog. Big fan of white dog. Yes, you are. So that was something we never did a show on. I, I'll come back to that. Oh yeah. yes, we have to. I, I, I'm a huge fan of all moonshine. So uh, when it leaves the barrel, distillers often uh, again add water to the proofing, something more sippable. In this case, Buffalo Trace is adding the third point of proofing between these two. Uh, Wheatley has described uh, this bourbon as having a nose that is sweet and floral with notes of oak, vanilla, and a bit of leather. There's a, a really smooth, creamy mouth mouthfeel here. Uh, the taste is pleasing, balance of butterscotch, honey, and wood with the with a crisp finish. Uh, while this marks the 23rd release of in the official experimental collection, distillery has released dozens of other experimental bourbons across the family brands. The E.H. Taylor line uh, holds Mashville experiments like Four Grain, which just came out a couple years ago, and uh, Arm Armoranth Grain uh, of the Gods. <laughs> Uh, while the old character Oak family plays with aging oak in barrels from all around the world. Uh, in total, the distillery reports that they have 25,000 experimental barrels aging uh, on the grounds. 25,000? 25, oh, 25, well, they don't mess around. They ain't playing. Yeah. Uh, they're de dedicated to Experimental Warehouse X, adds another layer of uh, confounds testing uh, different temperatures and humidities. Uh, around the barrel by experimenting with uh, so many different faucets, you might say facets, excuse facets, me, facets, probably, yep. uh, of the bourbon making process. The distillery hopes to find the points at which these best impact uh, can be made to be more of a final flavor. Buffalo Trace 12 year old uh, weeded bourbon uh, cut as four years will be available in limited quantities in May of 2020. So that's next month, that's a couple days away. Yeah. While this is a one-time only release, a spokesman from the distillery assures us that uh, it will be making its way around the country for suggested retail price for around 50 bucks. Oh, that's right. not bad uh, for a for 12 year. year. For, for a 375 milliliter bottle. What? So, but you, did you say it was four year old? Yes. Oh, yeah. four no, year. Well, yeah. So yeah, so no, no, it's, well, it's a, kind of. Well, it's a, it's a 12 year aged. Oh. It's a 12 year aged. All right, I got confused. Yeah, so in there. Uh, we'll read. Yeah, we'll, yeah. You know, we'll come back after the show and go over that. Yeah. But there you have it, kids. That's the only news I have today. Well, that's. I love that you you got a new Buffalo Trace because I know that's your favorite. It is. And a 12 yeah, year they, sounds like amazing. And so. I would love. They're. I'm very intrigued by their Warehouse X, and I would love to be able to do a. Uh, whiskey wizard that dives into warehouse X at some point. Well, you got to start at A, and then yeah. you got to go. Yeah. Well, through W and hit X, and. Yeah, I don't know, uh, but it's uh, they apparently they can. Four bottles of single barrel Buffalo Trace. Yeah, they're barrel picks. Where are they? Some of the best. They are some of the best. So, for sure. uh, I'm sorry, Dan Dan Ruth Daniel is asking, isn't there a new Blantons coming out? Yes, gold in June or July. It's going to be released in July. The gold is going to be released in July. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, uh, but Buffalo Trace is owned by a foreign company, and Buffalo Trace has the rights. They make it for this company overseas, and they get probably 80% of all the Blantons that is made here in Kentucky. So that's why Blantons is hard to get anymore. And you know, obviously, they have a, a, a deal with Bl or with Buffalo Trace that uh, you know they want to be able to release X amount of bottles here in the United States. So um, there's probably five or six Blantons out. We only get the original one, 
and everything else is overseas. But now they're starting to bring in a bottle here, a bottle there. But the uh, gold is supposed to hit the shelves sometime in July, and it's going to be $100, $100 or $125 a bottle, wow. just FYI. Wow. Wow. But I don't know... I don't know what the gold is. I didn't research it. It's probably something I should see if I can find some news on and maybe talk about that next week. Yeah, good idea. I've been to the distillery there twice. And the first time I was there, they were bottling Eagle Rare. And mm -hmm. The second time was Blanton. So um, it was just two uh, fun times to visit. Yes. We, yeah, it was great. So, so Oban uh, 14 is a classic West Highland malt. Everybody's a lot of scotch drinkers are familiar with anyway, but they're now come out uh, with Little Bay, uh, which in Oban mean, um, in Gaelic uh, means that um, with Little Bay uh, is what Oban means, I guess. Is it Bay so, B-A-Y or B-A-E? B-A-Y. Okay, you know, so, my Bay. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, speaking of, you know, we talked about cask finishing, the, what, this one is... Um, Done in, in you know America you know first fill bourbon cast, then um, they have also European sherry and a bit of new oak as well, and then they they marry those together and put them in uh, smaller oak casks uh, uh, to accelerate the, the aging, and then this so all those flavor elements come together, and what you have then is a significantly different uh, concept than their their I don't. For a non-age statement whiskey, they're you know to complement their classic 14, which is one of the classic single malts. So uh, it's 43% ABV, and uh, I don't know what the I don't know what the retail cost is, is going to be on that. But I think it'll be probably fairly reasonable. I'm going to guess in the $60 range, something like that. So. Um, I'm looking forward to giving that one a try um, as soon as I get my hands on it. All right. And then Buffalo Trace is, uh, again, coming out with their, uh, are you aware they're coming out with a kosher whiskey review? Yes, yes. So, yeah, they apparently they're coming out with three different uh, kosher releases, mm -hmm. uh, a bourbon, a rye, and a wheat, wheated bourbon recipes. Mm -hmm. And those, uh, I guess, were released officially on Passover, April 16th of this year. Um, so anyway, um, kosher law mandates that whiskey should not be owned or consumed by Jews during Passover. They make that known. And uh, anyway, they started working on this project with the Chicago, Chicago uh, uh, I'll probably say it wrong here somewhere but that's okay i say things wrong yeah, all the, the, time. Rab <laughs> the rabbi group in i Chicago. can't even read the yeah, notes rab <laughs> rabbinary, um, anyway um they've been working on it since 2012 and they finally been able to get this release together and just to finish i know we mentioned it one other time but i think it's noteworthy that four roses has come out with the fourth rose this year which is their four roses small batch select uh, another one um that I'm looking forward to getting, and uh, Big G, how many bottles do you have already? Three. There you go. So he's the master. If I discover something, he probably already has it. <laughs> and you certainly wore your Four I, Roses shirt today, too. Yeah, you wore your Four Certainly when it comes show. to... You want to yeah. open a bottle after the show? Sounds like a great plan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I only have so, three, so it's sparingly. <laughs> All right, so that's... that's uh, really kind of as we wrap up, any other... Um, I'd just like to mention, um, I really appreciate everybody coming out and uh, and reaching out to us on Facebook. It, it's been a great uh, experience the sure. last couple of weeks or sure. so with people joining, and we're getting some top fans. Mark Anderson, whoop whoop. Yeah, Mark A. Uh, right. You are one of our new top fans, and Handlebar, love you too. Handlebar, my man. Where's my Superman shirt? Damn it. <laughs> Good. And, uh, you know, it's... Maybe a little early to announce, but we are looking to do some special things for our top fans in the near future. Yeah. As soon as we can get yeah, we're going to do some uh, things for whiskey roundtable yeah. personalized. And you know those guys, you know what? Uh, uh, gifts. And any of our top fans, if you got, come do the show. 
Come do We'd the show. We'd love to have you sit down and do the show. So, we have part if somebody wanted to do that, what would be the best way for them to contact us? They would. They could reach out to. Uh, reach out to us on yeah, Facebook. Yeah, reach out on Definitely Facebook. Definitely private message us on right. Facebook and reach out to us. We okay. are very responsive. Or email us at the Whiskey right. Roundtable at gmail .com. Right. There you go. And you can also use that for questions or sure. comments. Or, and, you know. and we'd love to have people here. One of the things that we like to offer, you know, I know Big G talks about his stash of bourbon, and one thing that we like to offer to any guests that come on the show is to. Take a look at what we have and um, pick Trust something. Trust me, you want to see. <laughs> pick something. Um, you know, pick something yeah. off the bar you want to try. We'll, and we'll, uh, try it. We'll, we'll sit here and, and we'll try it with you. We may not do it on the show. Um, for those of you that are a little camera shy, you don't want to be on the show, you're come welcome to audience. come sit on the casting come, come, couch. Come we have sit an in audience the uh, live week. studio audience, as it were. Yeah. And uh, just kind of hang with us for yeah. the nice kind of see what we do. And uh, and the audience tastes the same stuff we do, kids. Yeah, we just do. FYI. We so always, it's one of the, you know, it's one of the perks. So we like Absolutely. To, we like to share bourbon yeah. and whiskey is meant to be shared with right. friends. So. Okay. For sure. We look forward to having, having more top fans and having you all come in and Check us out. And see, yeah. we'll see how we work, see how things are. A lot of people that have been here said, you know, I didn't really realize what you guys do. It's like to watch a show is one thing to see the prep that goes into it and doing the show and what goes on behind the scenes. It's, uh, it's a whole different Well, it experience. might look like we just wing it. Here, it, but it, yeah, it might actually, look like we don't know what we're doing. There is a little, but. believe it or not, there's some <laughs> preparation. <laughs> so, anyway, before we leave, I just want to... Uh, Say to uh, Grady and Trevor, uh, if you're listening, clean your friggin' room. <laughs> clean your room, you two little shits. Wait till Uncle. Gr Wait till after May first. So I'll tell you what, Uncle Grace come over, and kick some ass, and do right? that because the Whiskey Wizard will be watching. Amen. He will be watching. All right, kids. That's the end of our show. Thanks for joining us today. Well, wait, I want to leave us with our. Part. Oh, I'm yes. sorry. Yeah, what was I doing? This part. I love what these. was I doing? Yeah. What were you thinking? Oh, it's okay. It's okay. So, uh, Winston Churchill, the revered British Prime Minister and great wartime leader, mm -hmm. uh, was no stranger to a glass of champagne or a dram of whiskey. Um, he was uh, famously uh, known for quoting as he was trying to address and lift the spirits of the wartime troops. Uh, he said, remember, gentlemen, it's not France, just France that we're fighting for, but it's also the champagne. <laughs> so, and then my favorite one... Um, Recalling his upbringing, he said, the water was not fit to drink, and so to make it palatable, we had to add whiskey. And by diligent effort, I eventually discovered at some point that I liked it, and soon thereafter, soon thereafter that it was the water which was the unnecessary component. <laughs> <laughs> Very anyway. wise words of okay. wisdom. All right, so on that note, everybody have a safe weekend. Uh, we got uh, five, six more days left of this, and... Hopefully things get back to normal. So we'll catch you next week. Big G. Karen Helen Keller. Doug Dunbar. Thanks for watching the Whiskey Round. Thanks, everybody. Be safe, Take everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. See you next week. If whiskey stopped working, every bar in town would be closing their doors. Shutting down, everybody would be trapped with their thoughts. Because nothing else would pay like bourbon or scotch. Oh, no. Oh no, no If whiskey If whiskey Whiskey stopped working What the hell would I do? Honestly, to tell you the truth I wouldn't be over you whiskey stopped working If whiskey stopped working If oh. whiskey stopped working Jack D would be out of a job Jameson and me would be cut off Hank Williams songs wouldn't make any sense Yeah, this whole damn world
after working where the hell would I be? Probably halfway out of this town, leaving Tennessee. If whiskey 